We are live. We are live. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Hack Shack Studios. I'm your host, R.T. Bear, 35-year comic book veteran of this wild and wacky industry that we know and love called comics. Comic books. Comic books are my life. They have been for most of my, I was going to say my adult life, but that's been professionally working on them, but uh, pretty much my whole life. Since I was a wee lad, I think uh, as soon as that uh, I got my first Batman comic, it was all over. The journey had begun. So uh, once again, in the chat, show me a sign of life, and then I can continue with confidence. So hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's uh, keeping safe, keeping their hands clean, practicing uh, social distancing. Keep those people away, those bad, diseased people away. Yes. Ah, we have a sign of life. We have Peter. How are you, Peter? Hello. Hello, my friend. Gaming or what trademark? Hell art. Hell brethren. Oni64. I borrow ideas. Yo, yo. Oh, thank you so much, Sheldon Martin. Congratulations. Yeah, uh, I have 10 pages of Chrono Mechanics that I am going to be showing you guys uh, completely done. Pencils, inks, writing, lettering, everything. So there's 10 pages. I just got them. Well, I got them back the other day from uh, Jeff Eckleberry, uh, the gentleman who is lettering the book. And I thought since we got to 40K, I would show them off to you guys as a little celebratory thank you. And also I am going to be, uh, bup, 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 bup. I'm going to be inking this bad boy right here. Right here. This is another Mike Mignola uh, pencils. He's doing these cool uh, kind of um, just pop culture characters like serial mascots like Tony Tiger and Snap Crackle Pop. And he's doing uh, old cartoon shows like Frankenstein Jr. and um, what is it like HR puff and stuff? And this was a big one in my my childhood was which was Gigantor, the space age robot. So I'm gonna be inking this bad boy up for you. And if you guys have been paying attention, what I do is I ink these up live, and then um, I give the artwork away. So I'm gonna be giving this artwork away. But to qualify or for that to happen, I need four. Four backers on Chrono Mechanics. So if I can get four backers within the next 24 hours, then we will do a raffle and we will use one of those numbers, uh, the backing numbers, and we will use those numbers to uh, to number generate on uh, Pamela's phone and we will pick a winner. Pick a winner. So yeah, uh, 40K. Chrono Mechanics is at 40K, you guys. That's amazing. So thanks to everybody that has helped us do that. I should actually write down um, the backer numbers right now so I know where we're starting. And it's 4 o'clock. So this time tomorrow, you guys, at 4 o'clock, um, if we have those backers, if we have four backers, just four backers, you guys, then uh, we'll do the, the raffle. So hopefully we can get four backers within this live stream since it takes me a while to ink these things up. So uh, so very cool. Thank you guys so much for helping out with uh, the Chrono success. I do appreciate it. It has been a, uh, a long journey, and we're continuing the journey. Um, it's still going long and strong. So thank you guys. Uh, we have Michael Green. What's up? We have Vilnid. What's up? We have, uh, oh my gosh, I can never say uh, the name here, but I think this is Kenneth, Kenneth Rackafort. Um, I hope I'm saying your name right. How are you, brother? Hello, Art. Yeah, hello, everybody. So I think we have our introductions, and I can start moving forward. I don't know if I should show you guys the preview first and then start inking, or if I should start inking first and then... Hmm. Herm. Hum. Decisions, decisions, decisions. You know what? Maybe I'll show you. I'll show you. Uh, let me do this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about because there might be some people new to the 
to the live stream and don't know what Chrono Mechanics is. Well, Chrono Mechanics is my creator owned uh, IP and uh, it's a fun action adventure humor book called Chrono Mechanics. And uh, it's the whole title is Chrono Mechanics Retrofit. They do more before the dawn of time than most people do all day. And yes, we just hit 40K, you guys, 40K, 137, 539 backers, which means if we get four more backers, then I'll give that artwork away. But I wanted to show you what 40K has unlocked for all the backers. And we can also go over all the things that you'll get so far um, as far as stretch goals and freebies. There are a ton of them, you guys. And uh, that's that's part of the fun aspects is coming up with stretch goals, which we will have to come up with a new stretch goal in this stream as well. So we have to figure that out. I have an idea, but I'm going to run it by you guys and see what you think. So those are all the variant covers, the uh, print package. Okay, here's stretch goals. Okay, so from 12 to 15, you guys, 12,000 uh, to 15,000. Uh, we were given away the variant trading card collection. So what these were, or what they are, is they are all the variant covers. One's drawn by uh, Sean Cheeks Galloway. The other one is uh, Doug, uh, what am I talking about? Uh, Tom Bancroft, Aaron Lepresti does Zinn, and we have Carvaggio drawn by Carlo Barberi and inked by myself. So... I thought this would be cool to have like a cool little set within a set. So this is the variant uh, cover trading card collection. And then there's uh, there's one exclusive to the set, and that will be this one right here at 16K. And so all five of those trading cards you guys will get absolutely free. Um, and if you back today, you're going to get those as well. So this is not just for the, uh, the live campaign. This is for the in-demand campaign that we're running right now as well. So 17.5 will get you these cool badges. I call them badges, but uh, they're buttons. And it's the team 9.2 of sector seven. I love that cog, that logo, it's so cool. Um, and so at 19K, you get the guitar pick, Doug's lucky guitar pick. And it will have uh, Doug's uh, vacant look, rocker look on the, uh, the one side. I'm hoping to be able to possibly do a double side um, I'm going to have to figure out what that cost is going to be. But on the other side, I'd like it to say Lucky. So uh, in the comic book, when you see the pick, it says Lucky on it. So the guitar pick is also a prop or a character kind of in the story. So I can't wait for you to see that as well. Um, so that's quite a bit already. But wait, wait, there's more. So at 25 and 30K... Uh, we added 12 more story pages, so that's 12 more additional pages. So we took it from an original 48-page story, and because of your support, we got it to 30K, which added 12 new pages. So that's the fun of this, you guys. We're building this book right in front of your very eyes. So, you know, it's not just about, you know, getting cool stuff like badges and, and guitar picks and trading cards. It's also about enhancing and building a better book. So, and that's all because of you. Hold on for a sec. Uh, hold on. It's allergy season. I hate that. That's rude. So I apologize. So at uh, at 35K, man, we smoked 35, 37, and 40. I can't believe that uh, we generated that much in that short of a period of time. But um, But yeah, we did. So at 35 you will get the 112 page movie script and those are going out right now. Those are PDFs. And if you order today, you will get your PDF within the day or so um, because uh, Pamela's shipping those out now or she's mailing them out now. So one of the reasons we really wanted to do that is because of uh, the cabin fever and the pandemic lockdown that I'm sure there's a lot of bored people and if you're like me, I appreciate reading material. So this will keep you entertained for a couple hours reading the movie script. So you'll get that uh, ASAP. And then 37.5 is the upgrade. So we're going to take it from the saddle stitch uh, staple spine to a square bound spine with an, uh, an upgraded cover. 
So it'll look a lot like the black and white uh, volume one cover. So it'll be all square bound and stuff. So you can put it on your new, uh, not newsstand, but on your uh, book, bookshelf there. Yes, and this is the one we just did. We just did today, a 40K Chrono Mechanics uh, head sketch giveaway. So it's the golden time card, you guys. This is so cool. So the golden time card, one out of 10 of these are going to be put into the comic book itself. And so if you're one of the lucky people that get the, the golden time card with your order, then you fill it out, you sign your name, and then you send it to me, and I'll do a Doug drawing, a 9 by 12 Bristol board drawing um, that I'll be doing live on the show for you guys, and I'll mail that out absolutely no additional cost. So all you have to do is fill out the card and then send it to me. Uh, I was thinking the dilemma is going to be that people aren't going to want to send the card because uh, we are either go it's either going to be like gold paper that we're going to have it printed on or it's going to be foil embossed. We're going to have to look into uh, the actual cost of those. Um, we do have some paper samples, and the paper samples look pretty damn cool. Uh, they're, they're like metallic finished, like gold uh, finished, so they look really cool. So we're going to do that for you. And I had some people DM me, and also I answered um, – a question in the comments section last night. Uh, some people want just the uh, golden time card. They just want the card. Uh, and I was thinking, well, I don't know how I could do that if it's a giveaway. And I was either giving them away, like on top of the, you know, after the giveaway, or I was selling them. Then it would seem like you guys could then turn it in for a drawing. So I would like to get more of these cards to you guys that would be awesome just as like a collectible uh the golden trading card so i'm looking into that now so to answer your questions i'm not really sure but it's a good question and i am going to look into that if i can maybe do it as a tier where you could maybe buy it and maybe it could be printed like null and void or something i don't know what i could do um to make it different so it's not the same as the one that you uh send back for the drawing, but it would be neat to give some of these away or to maybe make them a, a small add-on, you know, maybe five or ten dollars or something like that. And then you guys can get the golden time card on top of that. So I just want to tell you guys, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh this is this is amazing. This is this is dream come true for me. Uh Pamela was so excited when she got the news. Um and she yelled up. She's like, we, we did it. We're at 40K. We're at 40K. And so uh, it was awesome. And then she's like, I think it was Kevin. <laughs> Kevin did it. So if Kevin Tomslet or Tomset is listening in the chat, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, your support has been um, so, so valuable with this campaign. So, yeah, these, these are cool, man. These are the variant covers. Look at this. Look at this. Tom Bancroft, and then we have Oot. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to scroll back up, get to the top, and then I'm going to see what you guys are talking about and then start doing my ink work. Boom. Boom. Yeah, so – so oh, there he is. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, man. Um, so cool, so cool. Um, wait. Wait. What? Are you the one that said it the other day in the chat too? I'll do it. I'll shave my eyebrows for 100K. I'll shave my wife's eyebrows too. I'll shave my kid's eyebrows. I'll shave my cat's eyebrows. How's that? Everybody that lives under this roof will have their eyebrows shaved. So there. Thank you, Rich. Thank you so much, brother. Um, thank you, Wilbur. Wooster, Wilbur Force Wooster. So, man, this is this is pretty amazing, man. Pretty amazing. Let's see what Michael Green says. So, any of us can get one by chance, and if we win, do we make or get to make a suggestion as to what you will draw? Like, could you draw a Black Flag character? I'm thinking I will probably. <laughs> When um, they're going to be chrono characters, and most likely it'll be Doug, the new recruit. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. Make those shekels. Yes. Make the shekels. Um, uh, what is this? The card uh, could be punched for, ooh, just like a, yes. Yes, we could do that. You could punch the card, and then that would be the voided ones. Good, good suggestion. Also, you guys, put your thinking cap on for the next stretch goal. I'm thinking of doing some cool, uh, like, patches. We have a manufacturer here locally, and they do patches. Let me get the black and white patches, and I'll show these to you. And I was thinking, you know that that cool cog that has the Team 9.2 of Sector 7 on it that maybe have them made as a patch? So that could be the next stretch goal. So these are pretty cool, you guys. Um, so that's my suggestion. Maybe you guys have a better one. Uh, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Yeah, the last four or five days, man, we've really rallied. Uh, pull my number. Pull my number. It's like pull my finger. No. Everyone loves patches. I dig patches, man. And there's a lot more people that uh, wear, like, bomber jackets now and, like, those Army surplus jackets. Those patches look really cool on those. And, uh, and backpacks. Yeah. Patches. Patches, we don't need no. No, you do need the stinking patches. They won't smell though. They won't smell. Art, are you going uh, to be at Ethan's auction on Friday or and and Saturday? They're both days. Um, sure. Yeah, that'd be fun. Exactly. Maybe uh, I can find some black and white old black and white artwork, or maybe even some chrono pages. <laughs> uh, just kidding, Art. Patches would be awesome. Uh, can you draw a dog like Stu from the first hangover with the missing tooth and a black eye? Uh, that is a request I might be able to do. Uh, we have a celebrity, another celebrity in the chat. We have Donald DeLay, the artist of Brutus the Badass. Hey, he's a badass in his own right. How are you, Donald? Uh, oh, snap. Is that supposed to be snap or snail? Snail. Uh, Rackafort in the chat. Yeah. Kenneth is good. He is a major, major talent and an inspiration to, uh, to hacks like myself. Um, Saturday Black Flag is launching. think it's going to be a uh, dual event on caps. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll be there for sure. Uh, ooh, uh, how about a fridge magnet card? Patches sound great, too. Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right, all right. Well, I'm going to start. I think I was going to do this with a brush, but I may do it. I found – I hope these pins will work um, because I kind of want this to look a little bit more technical. Um, versus organic. It'll look organic because I'm still going to do some brush work on it. But, um, yeah, and this is this is my transfer, you guys, because I want to do some ink wash. So this is Mike's original drawing. Well, it's not his original drawing. It's a Xerox of it or a uh, printout. And so then I transferred it. Because if I blue lined it, the blue line kind of mixes with the the ink wash with the water, and it um, it it can look cool, but sometimes it doesn't look that good. So um, I'm going to see if this is good. Yeah, that's a good a good line weight. So yeah, I think I'm going to block it in with this pin and then like i said uh as we get backers for chrono if we get four backers in the 24-hour period um we'll raffle this off like we did the um the scarecrow the dr sin piece so we'll do the same thing that was a lot of fun and i asked you guys if you wanted um 
me to do it again, and you said yes. So I aims to please. So this is me aiming to please. This little elbow here. So let me get, uh, I got to get this line in here. So this is going to be a little bit different the way I'm approaching this. So I hope it comes out good. It's never it's never a good idea to to do an experiment live, but what the hell, right? You only live once. Yeah, Mike's doing a series of really interesting uh cool stuff. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's auctioning them off for charity or not. I thought I read somewhere that maybe he was to try to help out some of the comic book shops that are in need. Yeah. So that's cool. So get a little bit more line weight there. I might bring a smaller, like a thinner marker in to do some of the more detailed stuff because I'm not sure I want everything to be the same thickness. And then all the hatch work. I'm going to do with a brush because I want it to look organic. Yeah, Mike's very technical. It's organic, but it's very technical, like very angular. And it's pretty different. I used to, I used to work a lot more angular and then styles kind of changed and I started rounding shapes a little bit more because I, I really liked um, like Mike's work and I liked um, Walter Simonson, you know, that really stylized work that was very angular. And even like Terry Austin's inks were kind of angular in the day. I think even Carl Kiesel had like a, a period where he was pretty angular in his approach. And then I think um, comics started getting a little bit more realistic again. So things went back to round, more rounded shapes. Well, that, I mean, there were still rounded shapes even then, but that wasn't the stuff I was really interested in. I liked the more angular stuff. Also, um, from an inker standpoint, it, it was always easier for me to um, move my hand in a more mechanical way than it was in a um, organic way, meaning like squared off shapes were easier to move my hand than rounder shapes. So I liked um, Angular because I could kind of move faster because my hand moved that way a little bit more organically. So, yeah, this is a lot of fun. And like I said, Gigantor was a big, a big um, childhood show that I loved. I loved it so much. There was a um, a local park when I lived in Lakewood, California, and uh, they had built this like giant robot um, in the little park play area for kids. You know, it's like that sandbox area. And 
it even made the news when they built this thing. And I just remember it was just down like the street from where I lived. And I just remember always begging my sister to take me because I was younger. And so we would like, it was in the middle of summertime and we would walk, um, we would walk to the park and there was like this horse stable area and there was a bunch of like there was always red ants there and for some reason my sister and i in the summertime we we never really wore shoes we always went barefoot so i always remember like walking through those those red ants um to get to the park um with bare feet i don't know why we never thought about bringing or just wearing like flip flops or something, but um, but that's what we did. We probably only did it one time, to be honest. But when you look back at your life, you're like, oh man, you know, it seemed to last forever, or like you did it, you know, a million different times. But uh, yeah, it was really cool. A lot of like parks have those or had because I think they tore them out because everybody's so afraid of somebody getting hurt. Um, there's like, like those rocket ships that they have at parks that you could climb up and they have like little steering wheels up at the very top and you can pretend like you're piloting the rocket ship, you know, when life was cool before everybody got like afraid of everything. So anyway, there was this giant robot that was at this park and uh, I used to call it Gigantor. And like I said, beg my sister so we could go to the park so I could play in it. And so I had forgotten about this, but they, this is what I called Gigantor at like five or whatever. I was five or six. So, you know, you could climb up and there were like little steering wheels and stuff like that up here. And then you could climb down and you could slide down his arms and things like that. So it was very, very cool. I mean, I thought this was like, the shit for me when I was a kid and uh, you could climb inside of a giant robot. And so I think we got this from a magazine clipping because it, it again made the news. This was probably, you know, 10 years ago or whatever that um, they tore it down. And I think it was because of safety because, you know, kids were falling or climbing and getting hurt or, some other nonsense, you know, um, so they tore it down. So this was kind of the big thing for me <laughs> when I was a kid. And so, yeah, I called this guy Gigantor, even though he looks more like Frankenstein Jr. or something, he's got these bolts kind of coming out of his neck. But man, hours of good, good fun. And I don't know if you guys remember those slides in the summertime, they'd get so freaking hot. Yeah, they would hurt because um, they were just, you know, metal. And they would hurt uh, when you slid down them. So yeah, so that's that's what I called Gigantor. And so my wife found the uh, the article and she printed it out and she scrapbooks, which is a nice thing for our daughter Amanda when she gets older that she can kind of look back and see how things were. I think there there's just a handful of pictures of me and my family when we were, when we were kids, there's not a lot. Um, I just don't think we, we had very much money. So cameras and film and things like that were kind of a non necessity. So we didn't really have too much of that growing up. So there's just a handful of, of that stuff that exists. I think Pamela has maybe two pictures of her childhood. So we kind of wanted to make sure that Amanda had, you know, more than just, you know, two drawing or two photographs of her and that she can kind of also see what her parents were like, you know, at a glance. So that's my Gigantor sto story, Gigantor the Space Age Robot. Yeah, there was a lot of imaginative, um, imaginative stuff when I was growing up. Um, now it seems like, you know, it's it's all just coming from Marvel, you know, which is good. I like it, but it all it's not as fantastic as some of the stuff when I was a kid. 
there really isn't any Hanna Barbera or any, um, you know, what was it, Sid and Marty Croft or or any of those things happening anymore. And and to be honest, a lot of the stuff now, like for kids, is um, it's very like um, cynical. Yeah, it's not quite as fun, I think, as it used to be. It it used to be like like you could have this stuff, and it was just very matter of fact, and um, you could have it and just play it straight. And now it seems like a lot of entertainment, they have to kind of poke fun at whatever it is. Like, isn't this silly? You know, like in a, in a cynical, sarcastic way. And uh, I think that's kind of the difference when, when I and maybe some of you guys were growing up. Things were more matter of fact. It was just like, it was there. They played it, for, they played it straight. They didn't make fun of you know, what it was, the, um, you know, so even like the Batman 66 series, like, you know, as a kid, I thought that that was legit. Um, my parents knew that it was, it was campy and silly, but I thought it was legit. And even that show, there was never any tongue in cheek. Like those care, those guys never broke character and they never, they never made fun of what they were doing. It was all played like very seriously. Um, and now stuff has to be kind of ironic and um, and it has to almost like poke fun at itself. Um, so then the reader or the viewer knows like, oh, well, this isn't supposed to be taken seriously. Um, or isn't this silly? We're going to show you just, you know, how silly it is. Um, and uh, I think it changes the tone of the entertainment and kind of makes it less fun because then you, you kind of have to see it through like more cynical um, kind of in a more cynical way. It forces you to see the flaws, I guess, you know, like, isn't this silly? Isn't this stupid? You know? Um, where before it was just kind of, it was just there. They just did it. Let you uh, make up your own mind. Like it wasn't until I was older that I was like, wow, this whole Batman thing was just for kind of laughs. Um, it wasn't meant to be taken seriously, but you know, for kids it was perfect. All right, I think I got all my bolded lines in place. So now I have to find something thinner to maybe, this might be too thin. Yeah, this is, I need to get out and order a pin because I need something in between this weight and, uh, and the thicker one. I, I don't use markers a lot, so I don't really keep a stockpile of them. But this will do for this image. Yeah, I wanted, like the, the one I did the other day was, um, it was a bigger piece too, so the brush worked better for it. This one has a lot more detail to it. So I got to make sure I can get in there and show it off properly with thinner lines, more accurate. But uh, yeah, Mike, Mike is a freaking genius, man. I'm so envious of his style. It's, it's so simple but yet so freaking cool. Like, I just think it looks amazing. There are some things that I don't think it lends itself to very well, um, but there are others that is just absolutely perfect. 
He did that Wolverine Savage Land graphic novel years ago. Man, that thing was amazing. And he was working with, I believe it was Howard Chaikin on that, or he was working with Howard on something. Because I remember I used to hang out at the Chaikin Studios, and I remember seeing those Savage Land Wolverine pages coming in. So maybe it was just because he was friends with uh, Howard that he was sending them pages or they were working on a project. I don't remember the details as, as much now if Howard wrote it or not. But I know those two did work together on various projects. Yeah, Mike has done quite a bit for this industry. He's very humble. Yeah, I told the story the other day. Whenever I, whenever I see people like Mike or, um, you know, people that are kind of big superstars or idols of mine, and I see them at the at cons and stuff. I never, I never act like they know me. And then when they they're friendly towards me, like they know me, um, which you know we've met and stuff like that, it still takes me aback. Like you know, like Mike Mignola knows who I am. <laughs> yeah, it's always it's always pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and Mike, was, Mike and I were supposed to work together on a, um, a Gambit miniseries for Marvel in the 90s. So that would have been cool. Guy couldn't imagine having Mike Mignola artwork right now like that I inked over man that would be cool like in the day I, I I'm still not that attached to my own artwork but in the day you know I was I wasn't attached at all like like I just I parted with all that art Adams and and Jim Lee and all that stuff I parted with that work pretty easily And now I, I kind of wish I had some of it. I don't have any Art Adams artwork. I saved some of my run on Superman, Adventures of Superman that I did with Dan Jurgens. So I still have some of that. Yeah, this pin is way too thin. I shouldn't have to go over these lines as much, but so I think I have one or two Walter Simonson pieces that I still have. And so, yeah, I sold all of that stuff. I could, I could buy a house with, if I had some of that artwork now, Because that stuff's worth tens of thousands of dollars now. Auction those off on EVS's stream. <laughs> yeah, you have to get some big spenders in there for that. Okay. I think I'm just about ready for the brush and get this face details and these little rivets. So you can see this is way more detailed than that scarecrow piece, the Dr. Sin piece I did. All right, here's a, a rivet. 
Here's a rivet. Yeah, Mike's got such a unique style. I liked, um, I wish I would have heard this or knew this sooner, but you know, you kind of look back at your career sometimes and you go like should have, would have, could have. And um, I remember hearing an interview with Mike and it just kind of hit the nail on the head um, for the way like I'm wired and what I really wanted to do with my career. And he said early on, he realized he wasn't really a monthly guy. Not that he couldn't keep the schedule per se, but just that um, he wanted to do kind of more projects that meant something to him and that he could be more involved in kind of um, like heart and soul or emotionally. And I remember when I when I penciled early on, you know, I got so invested in what I was doing and so lost in it that um, – you know, the company, you know, you, you, whether it was Marvel or DC would just go, hurry up, hurry up. We just want to get it done. We want to get it done. You know, we need to make the schedule. And so I, I never felt like I was doing my best work under in those situ in that situation. And I wanted to be more involved, like heart and soul and developing and, and working on it. And usually that means that there's a little bit more time invested in, in it and definitely more time than the publishers had at the time to give me. And so I, I believe that's why I started inking a lot more because I just couldn't, I couldn't really, I couldn't deal with that that type of grind, like I, I just wanted to do my best work and I wanted to spend time and to develop and, and do that type of work. And then also, you know, not necessarily did I have bad inkers at the time, but I had inkers that weren't really doing what stylistically I wanted. They weren't carrying the look that I was going for into the final product. And so um, that's when I started working more as an inker. But I, I remember hearing Mike talk about stuff like this and how that he he didn't really know how he was going to make ends meet and everything. But just maybe, you know, he was more brave than I was. But he just kind of took himself out of kind of a monthly kind of situation and started doing more kind of graphic novel stuff and working more um, like that, like story arcs, like one and dones, where there would be a complete beginning, middle and end. And then he would go on to the next project and so on and so forth. And so I always thought, you know, I never could articulate it in the day like that's what I wanted. And also those things didn't, they were kind of being created as I was working. They didn't exist prior. Um, but Mike, Mike recognized that in himself and what he wanted out of his work. And, and he went for it. And I think like that was, that was what I would have wanted to do if I was a little bit more self-aware and I think the reason also, like one thing that this industry does is is it kind of forces you to just, just kind of keep your head down and just keep working. Like don't stop. Like one of the things when you're working and talking, you just do it while you're inking, while you're working. You never really stop because every time you stop, that's one line that isn't being put down or, you know, you're getting one step further away from getting it finished. So um, I think part of it was that I was so into that like structure of getting things done and on that treadmill that um, I guess stress is a better way of saying it. 
that I never felt like I could I could go anywhere else. Like I could I was just basically holding on to every day. You know what I mean? Like just getting through this deadline. And then, you know, as soon as that deadline's done, then there's another deadline and and so on and so forth. And I don't want to make it sound like this is a bad thing because it's not. I, I had a great time, but it didn't really allow me time to to do like more of like creative storytelling and, and things like that that I wanted to do. And so that's why like right now in my life, it's so important, you know, with Chrono Mechanics and Black and White and those different, you know, IPs is that it's allowing me that chance to do those things that I didn't get to do early on. So I almost feel like I paid like a 35 year dues to get to where I am right now. So I could, you know, take time and develop these projects and do, do stuff that kind of means more to me personally, you know, and I think if I would have known that my, Mignola's story earlier, um, it would have got me thinking more outside the box versus the way it was. But, you know, I mean, like I, like I said, I, I don't regret it and I really need to pay, you know, pay the bills. So, you know, keeping your head down and, and getting things done quickly, um, it definitely paid off and there's been a few moments in my life that I've been able to do those things that I've been more in love with and more passionate about. I remember Dick Giordano when I was having those problems early on, it was on time masters um, just to give you kind of a time frame, and he could see because I was doing all these like sketchbooks and all this stuff, like all this development work and sending it to the writer, sending it to Bob Greenberger, my editor. And then those guys just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get the book done, get the book done. And I was like, isn't this cool? This, you know, but they were just kind of like bottom line. And I remember I was in New York and Dick Giordano, um, you know, had me come into his office and he called me his boy. Hey, my boy. Um, you know, I heard about, you know, time masters and I heard what you wanted, you, what you want to do and that you had a little bit of a problem with the schedule. Hold on. I'm going to take a drink of water here. And then he said, I'm going to give you some advice. He said, there are, there are projects you do for love and there are projects you do for money. And he said, you just have to figure out what those are, you know. Um, and, you know, it got me thinking that there was a difference. Like I, did, like, I didn't know they were different. I just thought you put everything you have into every project, right? Like, because I'm, I'm either all in or I'm not. Like, I'm not a, like, I'm just not that kind of person. Um, like, I remember I was working with, well, I was just hanging out with a friend and he, he does comic books, but he also does like advertising and lots of other stuff. And um, he was saying, like, look all the time that you spend on each one of these pages. He said, you know, they're not paying you enough for this. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, if you broke this down, like you're not getting paid um a proper amount like you're putting way too much time into uh your work and so you're it's not worth the money that they're paying you as far as an hourly and i i'd never thought like that before i thought you just put everything that you have into every you know every piece of artwork that you get and and that's it um and so he told me that and I started thinking about it, and I was like, oh, well, um, yeah, but that's just not – that's not how I'm wired. Like, I am I am really either all in or all out. So I remember just telling him, like, I don't, I don't think I can work like that. <laughs> like, like, I'm either – like, 
you know, everything plus the kitchen sink or nothing. Like I just don't half ass. Like I don't, I don't think like that. And so he's like, well, just take my advice. You really should because um, you're kind of losing money. And so I always, I always thought, you know, I always appreciated him saying that to me and I always took it to heart, but it's just not how I, I'm not wired like that. Like I get, I get way too invested in everything I do. So I can't, I don't really phone it in or I don't, I don't say, all right, you know, they're paying me this amount of money. So I'm only going to invest this much many hours into it. Um, it's not really how I am. So I never worked like that, even though it was great advice, you know, it was really good advice. I just never worked that way because um, it's not really, it's not really how I'm wired. So I'm either all in, and when I say all out, I'm not kidding. Like, just I won't do it. Like, if I can't, if I have to compromise something, it kills me. If I have to let something go that isn't everything, um, then it absolutely drives me nuts. So this is going to be way more articulate than um, the uh, Scarecrow one was. Because it's it, there's a lot more detail here, so it's probably going to take me a little bit more time to ink as well. But it's going to look sweet, and also I I'm going to probably put these in my Oodles of Doodles Volume Two. So let me give you kind of an update on where I'm at. So, God, this is so cool, man. Mike is awesome. This is gigantor, dude. <laughs> this is uh, my childhood. This is so cool. Um, yeah, so if you guys don't know, I'll take a little bit of a break here. And I'll read the chat, and I'll show you what the oodles is. Um, as soon as if, – if he wants, but there's – a guy I'm working with right now, Bob Stone, and he did all the graphics stuff for um, for Zach, your boy, and he's doing uh, stuff for me with Chrono Mechanics. But if he wants and he has time, after that, I would like him to put together Oodles of Doodles Volume 2. So this is my art book, and uh, it came out really cool. So uh, I did the graphics, um, the design work along with Tag. And uh, we put this together. And it's got a bunch of my covers and different artwork throughout um, my 35-year career. There's some sketches and doodles and commissions and all kinds of stuff in here. So um, I want to do a, a volume two. I want to do a second, a second uh, book. And I, I have enough, I have more than enough artwork, but there's a lot of cool stuff I'm doing uh, recently. Like, um, I think I did, uh, well, I did do a commission for Kevin Thompson. And so his, uh, his Judge Anderson is going to be in there. And, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've done recently is going to be there. So it's not going to just be older stuff. It'll be um, new work as well. And uh, I'll do I'll do a volume two. I'm not sure when it will come out. Like that's always the thing is <coughs> it's kind of hanging loose and seeing how everything progresses. Just as far as um, you know, uh, scheduling, because that's the biggest thing is being a like everything that that Hack Shack is, and all these, it's all driven by me. I, I mean, I do have some help, but you know, it's only so many hours in the day. So I usually just put out the fires that are in front of me at the time. 
And then um, if there's extra time later, I'll get things going. So there is a little bit of overlap as far as some of the projects, but you know what? This almost looks like it needs to be more of a solid black. So I'm gonna make these thicker. So there, yeah, it looks better. It looks better. Yeah, Mike just kind of did all these as like um, different direction hatches, and they look really cool with the pencils. But I'm not sure that they're they're going to ink up as good. Because I think this should be more solid black. But yeah, you guys. Um, if you want to be entered into the raffle, go check out Chrono. Back a book. Let me rinse this out. Oh, that came out cool. That looks awesome. Um, yeah, I'm taking a lot more time on this piece. Let me see what you guys are saying. I don't want to be rude and just ignore uh, what's going on in the chat? So, bup, 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 Sheldon Martin, uh, Jim Cox, Johnny Rando. Uh, Neil Adams say Western. Some, yeah, I pull towards me, and I know a lot of people like what I mean by that. Hold on, is um, they ink this way from here out but i i ink towards but i think it's all what you're comfortable with all right oh thank you thank you my friend is that a yeah it was a micron oh my gosh uh andrew stuff would be awesome that would be crazy Infantino, yeah. Infantino had a little edge, but there was also some cool rounded. Um, so there was a good combination of round lines with angular. And that's what I try to do now. I try to combine the two. <laughs> oh, I thought you had just uh, uh, put an O instead of an A. Uh, cool. Oh, man, that's cold-blooded, dude. I said Donald DeLay was a celebrity. He says, I'm still looking around. Oh, my gosh. Donald gets no respect. He gets no respect here at Comics Gate. I, lo I love you, though, brother. I, I think I I really, really enjoyed Donald's work. Um, yeah. Yeah, like there's certain characters that just look kind of weird. And it also depends on the Batman style. Like what did he do, that that Gotham by Gaslight or whatever it was? That was perfect for his style. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Crackhead Jeremy. <laughs> I hope that's just a clever name and not really you're not really a crackhead. Not that I have anything against crackheads, but I, I have known a couple crackheads in my time, and um, it doesn't end well for them. All right, Spirits Car says, EBS, Malin, and Frega talk about 90s image comics like a little boy talks about their mama. Uh, the art was hot. The writing was trash. 90s Vertigo and Dark Horse were among the best comics in the 90s. Um, yeah, I'm going to be a little little snobby. I, I had a conversation with Rob Liefeld a couple years ago, and he was like, uh, he's like, what's the best thing about Image? Or what, what, what do you regret? Or what? It was something like that. And I just said, um, the only thing about Image in the day is there really wasn't there wasn't a Dark Knight Returns. There wasn't a Year One. There wasn't a Watchmen. There wasn't a like really definitive, amazing book. You know what I mean? That that 
actually change the 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 um, the way we look at comics or the way we we conduct comics. I mean, there was stylistic stuff. You know, there was the computerized color. There was the upgraded paper. There there was a lot of things that Image did, but they weren't really as far as IPs or creations. I think the closest was was probably Spawn. Okay, um, so that was that was that went to the chat. Let's get back onto this. Oh, and if you guys could uh, give a thumbs up and maybe tweet this out and let people know that I'm doing this, I would greatly appreciate it. That would be cool. I'm actually, some of this stuff looks like it's supposed to be more solid black, but I really like all these, these kind of side of the pencil things that he did here. So this is going to be kind of my interpretation of my... So I'm going to do all these kind of um, these lines in here to keep that kind of kinetic look going. But the tricky part is to figure out where it fades into the solid blacks. So that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. Um, bup, 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 bup. yeah, maybe, maybe this should be solid. Ha ha, look at that. That worked. And this, I think I'm going to keep it pretty thick. but I'm going to move them closer together and thicken them up as I go down. Let's see what this looks like. Clean up this line a little bit. Hells yeah. Wow, this is going to look cool, you guys. Somebody's going to win this thing. We're going to do a raffle tomorrow, but we need to get uh, we need to get some chrono cells. So let me finish this arm, and then I'll check and see if we got any backing action. Just for any latecomers, if you want this piece of artwork to uh, be entered into the raffle, all you have to do is back a Chrono Mechanics book. And the link is in the description. Go there, back any tier. And your number, your backer number, will be entered into the raffle. We did this the other day, and it was, it worked out really well. And um, and I think it was a lot of fun. So we'll do that again with this Gigantor piece. And so I did a little poll and asked you guys, um, I showed a few pieces that I liked, and you guys picked Gigantor. And and you said you wanted me to do a raffle again. So, And everybody that backed a book from number one first day to now will be entered into the raffle. So all five, what did I write down? 539 people. Um, that's what we started out with today. But we need to get five more backers or four more backers. And if we get four more backers by this time tomorrow, then we'll raffle this thing off. And if we don't, I'll have to figure out something else to do. Maybe I'll just keep it. Let me see. I'm going to go check out um, the campaign and see if we got a backer or two 
So 539, 539, 539. All right, you guys. I'll keep going. I'll keep going. There's still time. We are not in a rush for time. Time for timer. That should be Mike. Mike's next uh, character. Do the time for timer guy. I think I want that more solid. There we go. Perfect. I put a little holding line, little hairline. And then, um, do I want that solid? I think I want this solid there. It's coming together right now. Over me. All right, so let's see. This looks like it's pretty much solid black. So I need to put some really thick stuff in there. Looking good. And then I think this should be, let's see, I'm going to do it this way first. Ha ha, look at it. It looks like it's turning, turning form there. All right. Okay, so this is a little highlight there. Get some of those black fades in there better. Wow, this is coming along. So if you want to get your hands on this piece of artwork, back a chrono tier, and you will be eligible for the raffle. We will raffle this bad boy off tomorrow. Yes, my tip of my brush is picking up crap, is picking up the crap. All right, I think we're going to go solid black there. Holy crap. I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do this very thin. I don't want heavy on his face. Yes. And then there's Now we're talking. I will put some thin lines right. Wow, it's getting it's getting warm. California's heating up. My ink is drying fast. So I let's do this as some solids.
And before I go there, let's finish up this guy's shoulder here. Um, I think this is different. So this I'm going to go real thick as well. Into a black. Yes, it paid off. And then I'll do this one here. And then there's some kind of thinner ones here. I'm going to move them closer together too so they look more like they're supposed to be or they're in the same realm as uh, the ones up here. I think I want more black in here. So there's that, and I'm going to fade this into a black. And then make all of this solid. Wow, it's coming together. It's coming together right now. Over my okay, I'm gonna do these ones thicker because they're more in the black, and then these little ones here, and then these ones here. So wheat, and then just a few hatches here, and then solid. And I think I'm going to make this solid. So you guys can also see how there's there's probably various ways that you can interpret these pencils. Like you could have just done all this stuff here as a solid black, you know, but I wanted to do something a little different than than Mike usually does. And also he has all these these cool directional hatching for the solid blacks. And it just kind of inspired me to do it in this in this way. I'm not sure if this is a like how he meant it to to look, or if he was even thinking it would be inked. Um, I'm thinking that he didn't know it was going to be inked, or wasn't. He definitely wasn't penciling it to be inked. So there's some really thin lines here that aren't penciled in, but I'm just inking them in, and some of this. This more gray area, I'm, I'm going to bring some wash into it. So um, I think there's like a little bit of a shadow here too that I can do with the, with the ink wash. Just to bring another dimension to it. Okay, and then we'll fade this over. And bring this solid. Cool. Oh, 
Comics are fun, kids. All right. Let's figure, you know, maybe this should have been solid. I'll figure it out. It worked. It worked. So I'll go down. Gigantor the Space Age robot. Was Johnny Sacco, who was the one that controlled Giant Robot? I think, uh, oh no, that was Giant Robot. That wasn't, that wasn't Gigantor. They're all blurring into the same. All right. This one's going to be heavy. So wheat. You know what? I don't like this. I don't like this. I liked parts of it, but now I don't like it. I don't think that's working. Let me put this one in first. And see how it works out. Yeah, I think that probably should be a solid black somewhere in there yeah maybe even the whole thing yeah it's looking better and Possibly thickening these guys up to bring more black in. Ha ha, there you go. There you go, Gigantor. Now we're talking. So this definitely beats working for a living. Let me rinse this out. Like I said, the ink is drying very, very quick. So I'm over halfway done, you guys. So thanks for hanging and being patient. Let me see what you guys got going in the chat. We got Spirits Car. Oh, John Davies. John is in the house. Mark, is that uh, Gillum? I sat on one of Avatar's panels at a con several years back because I was waiting for Dark Horse, which was in the next room. The creative team were pretty painful to listen to. I hope I'm not that painful to listen to. I uh, try to stay entertaining. Right now, I'm doing my song and dance. You can't see me, but do, do, do. I'm doing a strip tease. Uh, Matrix was taking down. Matrix borrowed a lot. Um, ideas from visuals uh, from Morrison's um, Invisibles. Yeah, all that stuff is from comic books, you guys. 
We have Central Scrutinizer in the house, starting trouble in the chat. Um, yeah, I guess in a nutshell, there's there's always um, there's always stuff like that. Um, very rarely are there, you know big books that stand out, those are still kind of exception, exceptions to the rules, like really, really good stuff. Amazing piece, brother, Gigantor. Yes, thank you, John. Thank you. John used to work here at the shack. He was he was cool because uh, when Taylor and I were working, we would just say, hey, uh, 80s hair metal, boom. We'd have 80s hair metal. That guy had his finger on any kind of, like, even um, entertainment. Like, hey, let's listen to some Adam Carolla. Boom, Adam Carolla. Yeah, John John could entertain at the studio probably better than I am right now. Uh, that stuff was so much fun. A Dynamite has Evil Ernie, but not Lady Death. Uh, why they don't just work with Polito and do an Evil Ernie Lady Death reunion and make a million dollars? Who knows? Um, I don't know. Maybe that's in the works. Do you never know. Oh, if I turn on a fan, dude, it'll be loud and noisy. I'd like to. I could add a little bit of extra pelican to. Um, this is. What is this brush? This is a Windsor Newton Series 7. I think it's it's Sable. Yeah, it's it's Sable. And it's um I think it's a it's a number 2. So some people like the number 1, some people like the 3s. I think 3s too much holds too much ink. Um it can get away from you easy and the ones are just the opposite. They don't they don't hold enough ink. So you're constantly dipping. So I'm going to add some more. This is this is my uh, ink of choice. I'm going to add a little bit more ink in, see if I can thin this stuff out because it is drying very, very fast. But the figure is almost done, you guys. Uh, thanks for helping with the time. And, uh, and please check out Chrono. Check it out. Check, check, check it out. We just hit a milestone. Oh, oh, and keep in mind, I am going to give you a preview of some lettered dialogue pages of Chrono Mechanics. Yeah, we just, um, well, we got them back. It was like late last week uh, from Jeff Eckleberry, who is the letterer on the book. And I'm going to show you 10 of those pages as a nice uh, celebratory thank you for all the support and, uh, and help to get Chrono to 40K. Fade that into a black. And I'm going to straighten this out. And these are kind of thin wispies. <sighs> A little smuts on the board. Okay, and then these ones are really thin. And when you guys do this kind of work, make sure that each one of these directions is slightly different from the other because um, you never want to be too patterned with it because then it will look, um, it'll look mechanical. And you don't want that. I mean, he is a robot, but 
you still want it to look. I think this is gonna, I'm learning my lesson. I think some of this, as much as I want to hatch it, it looks better solid black. Wow, that is cool. This as well, maybe some hatching right in here. Should I do, you know, I'm going to try this. See, there's maybe a little uh, up lighting. Get a little, little lines in there. So, inking, you make a lot of decisions too, like a lot of uh, drawing decisions. How to you know, make everything kind of work and um, and how you interpret the pencils. There are a lot of different ways to interpret pencils. Some guys are looser than others in their style, so it's easier to... Um, kind of read stuff into it. I, I actually like inking over pencils versus blue lines because um, sometimes a penciler will do something like a side of the pencil like line or there's like little like kinetic things that they do. And sometimes that inspires me with the ink. So I'll kind of emulate that in my brush movement. And sometimes with the blue line printout, you can't see those those little those little movements, those little kinetic movements. And so that's why I, I, I prefer pencils than actual just blue lines but that that's some people like the the blue lines because i think they they like it because they feel less pressure because if they screw up they could just print out another blue line page and blue line has it does have some advantages, but as far as just a sheer enjoyment of inking, I like inking over pencils best. Kind of like what I'm doing here. <laughs> this is coming together. That's pretty cool. Yeah, once again, if you guys want this this piece, uh, go back a, a black, uh, Corner Mechanics book, and uh, you will be entered into the raffle to win this fantastic piece of artwork. And uh, I'll pull, like each one of the backers have a number. So then I'll pull the numbers. Well, I, I got a, like a, on the, there's a number generator on the phone. So then I'll just, I'll put all the, you know, 500 or one through however many, what is it? 539. Hopefully we have more backers now. Um, and then whoever's number comes up will win this piece of artwork and we'll send this out ASAP like with the, um, the one I did the other day. And then um, tomorrow 
uh, around the same time, four o'clock or whenever it was when I started the stream, we'll do the raffle. Hopefully we'll have um, four backers. All we need is four backers, four new backers, and then everybody will be eligible for this piece of artwork. And it's just a fun little way to give back to you guys. Just a little aside. Yeah. Uh, Hack Shack backers and supporters are the best, man. You guys are, are um, amazing. Nothing short of amazing. All right. Now we're getting into some leg action. Leg on leg. Okay, there'll be kind of a shadow in here. And then this is black. This is black. down to uh to the lower regions of gigantor his lower extremities he's a space aged robot he used to have cool theme songs too for those kid shows the best all right and I think this is a shadow. I'm kind of looking at his pencils for some inspiration as well because um, the version I'm inking is my light boxing, his version. So some of the more subtle things didn't come through. So I'm looking at what he did to help inform what I'm doing. Well, his upper body is complete. Let's go with a little bit of hatching here. But I think other than this, this whole bottom part is going to be solid black. And then I kind of want to do this leg more faded. Maybe I'll do this part first because I want this part to be more solid black. The great Mike Mignola, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this is just fun stuff, too, because uh, it's not only a childhood favorite, the character, but I'm also getting to ink one of my favorite pencilers, creatives in this business, Mike Mignola, which is quite a hoot. And yes, I said hoot. You heard me correct. This is me having a hoot of a time. Hoot nanny. All right, so like I said, solid black here. I'm double checking to see how he did it. All right. And then um, I think we got the leg pretty much blocked in this leg anyway. There's some light hatching here. He 
Okay. And I don't know if I want to get into the rock yet. I want to kind of finish up the Gigantor. While my brush is cooling down, I'm gonna get back in the chat and wet my whistle. Wet my whistle, where are you guys? Where are you? We got Rooster Puncher in the house. We got Shinobi, Shinobi Raccoon. You should uh, you should do a drawing of Tanzor Z. Who? Uh, <laughs> his Nether regions. Yeah, I just kind of blacked them in. Yeah. Uh, so, are you saying this stream is boring or Winger stream is boring? I hope you're not saying this one's boring, because. Uh, because then you're going to give me a complex, and I'm going to lose all confidence, and then I'm going to start choking. I'm going to start choking and stumbling all around, getting all in my head, screwing up. Uh, I like Gigant uh, I like that Gigantor is a body positive robot. <laughs> uh, Spears car is on a roll today. He's a robot. Um, wait, wait, Marty Joe uh, Young. He's a robot art. He is mechanical. Yes, he is mechanical. I will not even debate that issue. Do, 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 do. Um, a Gigantor. Um, Gigantor is from the same era as Speed Racer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I watched... Speed Racer, I watched the shit out of that. And um, that darn, what was it called? Kimba, the White Lion. And uh, what was that? Uh, the Atomic Boy, what was his name? The Robot Boy. Yeah, that stuff was pretty cool, man. G oh, Jimmy Sparks controls Gigantor. Good call, Johnny. Because there was Johnny Sacco, that was Giant Robot, right? Giant robot. Man, as a kid, didn't you want to just be able to control a robot? That would have been so badass. I still want to control a robot. We got one of those Roombas or whatever, those things that sweep up the floor, and I feel like I'm uh, I'm its, its owner. <laughs> Astro Boy, yeah, that's it. Yeah, Astro Boy. Thank you, Kenneth. Um and we have a couple other people with Astro Boy. Yeah, that shows how old I am. Yeah, I'm pretty old. Uh, are you the bum that told the bum that I was the bum that took the bubble gum? Um, no. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's get into this leg. And then the ground, and then the most important part of the drawing, which is the signature. You guys should know that by now. The most important part of every drawing is the signature. And all cool artists have cool signatures. So you, get, you have to have a cool signature. I'm not sure this is going to work out. Yeah, well, maybe I can still pull it out. Let's see. Yeah, because he has um, thicker lines in here. See if I can fade into the kneecap. That's pretty good. Maybe I think these need to touch. Aha, that was it. 
Sometimes it's little details, you guys. The little details. Okay, so then I think we're going to take this knee and do it almost completely solid black. Well, this is working, and I think this needs to fade in better. Possibly touching. There we go. Gigantor, the space age robot, bop, bop. Let's go here. And I may start getting a little looser as we go down into the rock and maybe some dry brush just so it has a little bit of a different feel than this really mechanical um, hatching. We'll see if we can we can make that happen. So now we're starting to get into that. So I'll move faster and try to get some dry brush in so the rock looks slightly different than the mechanical parts. Just so there's a little bit of a difference. I kind of like parts of it. It's a little too much. Some of the wash will help smooth out some of the transitions as well. So I'm purposely letting uh, the brush kind of give a more streaky look um, for the dry brush effects to work. So this is where the brush being more dry works in your favor. Having said that, I'm picking up crap again. So let's see there. Wow, look at this. You guys, this is worth a chrono backing. If you want this original piece of artwork, um, go back a chrono tier, and uh, we'll do a raffle tomorrow, and I'll give this away absolutely free to you guys. And if I have to keep it, oh, oh darn. <laughs> no, nah, I'll eventually, yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep going with it until um, I can get it into one of your hands. Cause I'll just, I'll just scan it in and then I'll, I'll make it part of um, the book. So see how it's getting a little looser there? I think I might want to build some of these a little thicker. So yeah, each one of these, you might not be able to see them, but they're a little bit grainier, the, the hatching. So 
it, it's kind of a little bit of a departure from the uh, the robotic parts. And sometimes don't be afraid to go back in and, and tweak areas with the ink because um, the piece really isn't done until you say it's done. So you can come back in and and tweak and play with some some of the the areas. Okay, I think I want some of this to fade more into the black. Yeah, that looks way better. I may even thicken this up here. How you doing, kiddo? Good. I have bought you a teriyaki salmon bowl. Oh, thank you. Is it dinner time already? It's six o'clock. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, she came out okay. The kid came out okay. She's a okay kid. Okay, so here I want it to fade out. So I'm also going um, thinner with some of this stuff. So it looks like it's kind of fading out. And man, that salmon teriyaki bowl smells good. I'm going to have to speed up. Speed up. I didn't even realize I was hungry until I smelled that teriyaki bowl. We have a sushi place down the street, and uh, I'm not like a big sushi person, but they have a like this salmon teriyaki that's really, really good. So my wife and kid eat uh, their sushi, and I eat my uh, salmon. Wow, this is looking cool, man. Oh, wow. Oh, geez. Okay. Let's get some more dry streakiness in here for the rocks. And... Wow. All right. So I think I just have his leg to do. There's a couple hatches and stuff on his knee. And these are really fine. So I got to make sure that I keep them thin. So they stand out. I think if I do a couple more of these, I'm going to have this down. I'm going to have this style down. I think I want more of a fade in here. Getting a little muddy in here. That's better. I think I want this to fade a little bit more. Oh my gosh, this is killer. All right. Well, I want to see if this is paying off. I want to see if you guys are back in this book or not. Um, 
Let's go here. Let's see. Should I do it? Yes, I shall. All right, screen, screen share, boom, boom, boom. All right, so we started the uh, the live stream with 539, 40,137. Man, you guys, you guys are awesome. This is so cool. And if you're just tuning in, we just passed another stretch goal. So we got another stretch goal into your hands. So this is my uh, my book, my creator own book, Chrono Mechanics. Retrofit is the title, and um, let's let's hit this. Let's hit this. All right, one thirty-seven, one thirty-seven. Oh man, I'm not inspiring. I'm not inspiring you guys. This is not good. Is my ink work not good enough for you guys? What am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? All right, let's um, let's throw some. You guys are probably saving up for that auction. I want some of this pencil to go away because I don't want it to get trapped in with the wash. Okay. Yeah, some of it I don't mind, but yeah, I don't want to get overly obsessive. Right, I think I think it's clean enough. All right. All right, let's get some ink wash in here. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. Ooh, there it is. Okay, so this whole leg. I'm going to gray down. I think I need a little more ink. That's a lot more ink. Do, 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 do. All right. A little bit less. Let's get some less. Okay. Actually, that's a lateral move. Let me throw some more black in here. There we go. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is fade out some of this rock. I'm probably going to have to go back into that soon. Otherwise, it's going to get too dark. Let me lighten up some of these areas. Do, 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 All right. Let me see what else I got here. Get a little gray in there. Let's make this a little bit more black. I think it needs to be a lot more black. That ain't working. That's the way you do it. You get your money for nothing and your chicks for free. Okay, just a little grayscale enhancements. Let me see where else I can put some stuff. I need some more dark. Give me dark. 
there. That might be too dark. Put a little dark in there. Let me get my little blot, my blotto. You don't want too dark because you want to still see the the hatching through it. Some of this is too dark. But you can see, I don't, well, you should be able to see it. The camera's looking pretty good. You should start being able to see some of the grayscale, and it's adding a different dimension to it. Just a little bit more extra to it. Let's get some more black in here. A little bit more in here. Yeah, this piece looks like it's handling um, a little bit darker wash. Sometimes when I do, like, the women and their faces and stuff, I um, you got to be careful. You can't do real heavy, heavy black because it'll just destroy the look so let me get some more black on my brush oh that's way too much it's all or nothing with me today it's all or nothing okay let me put some i want this darker too so it fades so i'm kind of using some of the black wash to help fade some of these transitions Okay, I still don't like this shoulder. I don't want to make it too dark, though. Ah, oh, geez, look at what I just did. That's almost full ink. But it worked. It worked. For some reason, I want to do something with that nose, but I don't know what it is yet. I'm going to bring some more shadow in here. When it comes to faces, you got to be, it's a little tricky. You can't put too much like that. You can't put too much in there. But I am going to bring more black in here. Okay. One more in here. Okay. And let's see. A little in here. Give it all a little loving. Okay, and then I'm going to put a light bit right in here and in here. Maybe a little bit more down here. Maybe a little more in here. All right. Let's put 
put a little shadow in there and maybe a little in here to give it some roundness and maybe okay I think I know where do with the nose and you know what let's put this side of the face in a little bit of a shadow yeah that worked Maybe a little bit there a little bit more here A little shadow there. Let's give a little shadow here. And then I'm going to do the whole, like I'm going to do like a sky, like a little bit of a, a background color. And that will probably be it for this. Oh, look at that. Going crazy. Little too much. Okay, go a little bit more in there. Maybe some like little textures and possibly let's pull out a little detail on these rivets. That might be too much detail. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So other than the background that I was going to do, this looks pretty good. All right. Well, I'm going to get a batter brush out because this is going to take some serious watercolor. I'm going to have to bring this out too. Because I need to get this mixture just right. Because these, these big spaces don't allow any room for error. So let's, let's water this down a little bit more. I can always build it back up. This is probably too much. Um... Let me get my little blot, my little blotto. You don't want it too dark because you don't want it to affect the figure. Okay, where's my... And this is pretty dark, but we'll lighten it up as we go. And sometimes this this will dry um, darker, so sometimes you want to be careful, not get too heavy with it at first. You can, like I said, you can always come back and build up, but 
I don't want it to be too dark at the beginning. Okay. Get a little bit more water in here. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This has been a lot of fun. So here we go. Here's the Gigantor piece. Oh, oh, what is the most important part? I almost forgot. Let's see if we can do this with um, something more suited some of my pins are way too thin okay so let's get mike's signature in here this pin is kind of shitty it's not the brand it's just it's old I think it's a Pentel. Oh, Sharpie. What? This is actually pretty good ink for Sharpie. It's smooth. Okay, and then let's get mine in here. The most important part of every drawing. The signature. Okay, my hand's a little dirty. It gets grimy doing this, this type of work. Ah, yeah. Let's go with something a little more fine. This thing's getting away with it's getting away from me. I think the tip is just all kind of busted up. And now we're getting into the detail. You can't have a busted up pin tip. All right, you guys. Well, I do appreciate you hanging. It's always uh, more fun. And this is for you guys. So um, I'm. it's going to be up for grabs for the next 24 hours. So... Four o'clock around this time tomorrow. Um, if we have four backers, we need four backers on Chrono. If we have four backers in this 24 hour period, then I will auction, not auction, I will raffle. I don't auction, I don't do auctions. Um, I raffle, meaning you don't have to pay for it. But if you back a book, um it's a kind of it's a kind of payment but uh you will get this you will get this fantastic mike mignola rt bear there's a little bit of grime here i'll get rid of it later um piece of artwork so here it is in all its glory i'll probably scan this up and put it up on my twitter and on all my social media with an explanation of what it's all about. And if you want to be eligible to pick this up, to win this absolutely free, just back a book, back a chrono book. 
and we will do a raffle tomorrow. And one of you backers will get this piece of artwork. So, um, so very, very cool. Like I said, it was, it was awesome hanging out with you. Um, I got my, I should show you this. this look at this. My salmon and rice. Look at that. That's a lot of salmon, baby. That's what she said. I don't know. It doesn't work. Um, yeah, let me let me uh, get some chat stuff here. See what where you guys are. Um, ba, 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 ba. Start out with brush. How to draw the marble? Yeah. Um, Kingdom Comics says I started out with brushes because of how to draw the marble. Uh, way, but then went to pins. I was young and made um, too much of a mess with brush and ink. I'd probably do better now. Um, now I was like 13. Oh, yeah, when you're 13 years old. <laughs> yeah, don't get discouraged. That's the main thing when you're young. Don't get don't get discouraged. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. King Crow. We got King Crow in the house. In the house. I think there's a lot more people that use pins these days. And I think it's just it's just a sign of the times. I think uh, brush and pin, there was a certain level of uh, craftsmanship and pride that went into using those tools. And um, I think that markers are less uh, looked down upon as a craftsman's tool. And so, and a lot more uh, pencilers are inking their own work as well. So I think digital and markers work good for them. I think if you had a professional inker that was just using markers, uh, I, I think they would kind of be frowned upon because it's not really an inker's tool, like an ink inker's tool. Uh, we have Nighthawk Warrior. Thank you for an amazing live stream. You are very much welcome, my friend. Uh, this was a lot of fun. So thanks to all for hanging out. And like I said, if you want to own this piece of artwork, there's a chance. All you have to do is back a Chrono Mechanics book, um, just four backers. If I get four backers in a 24-hour period, then tomorrow around the same time, we will raffle this piece of artwork off, and one of you lucky uh, backers will win it will win it. Um, absolutely uh, no shipping cost. Um, I'll, I'll set it all up. I'll send it out to you. And, um, and just to set it up again, um, that everybody from the first backer to the last four backers will be eligible for this piece of artwork. So if you have a friend uh, and you've already backed, encourage them to back. Uh, then you have a better chance of winning this <laughs> piece of artwork. Uh, let me see. Okay. Oh, cool. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me figure out how many backers. We got a few backers here. I should have probably checked earlier. Okay, so we got um, we got one backer. So we were at 539. We had we got one backer during the stream, which is good because then we only need three more backers. Three more backers, and we will go live tomorrow with a raffle for this. So tune in tomorrow as well. And oh, oh shit! I I was gonna show you guys. Oh my gosh! Look at this. I think the food's talking. I'll leave this here. Uh, this is also a celebratory. I'm gonna show you guys some Chrono stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause we hit 40k. Yeah, yeah. All right. Hopefully you guys can see this. This is, oh my gosh, you guys. This is a finished page of Chrono. This is page one of Chrono Mechanics Retrofit. Um, so this is uh, with Jeff Eckleberry's lettering on top of it. I can't make them smaller so you can see the whole page. So I'll have to kind of scroll. So uh, in a distant corner of the universe is an area that is free from the effects of time. This section of space has been set aside for the sole purpose of housing the always bustling time repair company known as dot, 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 Chrono Incorporated. This is the best kept secret in the history of, well, forever. Yeah, so you can see the tone. It's fun. It's sci-fi. We got some action adventure in here. 
So, uh, yeah, this is Chrono Incorporated. Look at the different fonts. I was telling you guys that each one of the characters speaks with a different balloon and font. So you can see that at play right here. So this, uh, this, the main one is Skippy. Um, that's his font. And then the more mechanical one in the circle, that's Eugene. And Eugene is, uh, is the computer program for Chrono Inc. So he is the mainframe computer. This is the mainframe computer room. Employees just call it Eugene's office. So Skippy is just doing a routine uh, maintenance check with uh, the elucidator, AKA Eugene. Ooh, I got some sauce too, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so as the Chrono elucidator, Eugene is the foremost holographic authority on all things time and company related. Just ask him, he'll tell you. So um, this is, like I said, Skippy and Eugene going over like a routine day. This is their day-to-day -day stuff. But then um, Eugene or uh, Skippy asks Eugene, Eugene about uh, Team 9.2 of Sector 7. Um, it's just a routine maintenance uh, check on the C7 cooling plant. And uh, Eugene is just like, one moment, checking. Mm, ah, hold on, Skippy. This situation is going to be... Uh, going to require a more personal touch. So then he goes into hologram mode, which means that he can kind of become human or human-ish, <laughs> humanoid. So he's uh, walking, talking, breathing uh, hologram. So he can interact and he thinks uh, it's better to talk to Skippy as a human because he's trying to figure out how humans interact and how they relate to each other. So this is him trying to relate more to Skippy. And so he has some bad news to give to Skippy that they're they're finding out. And uh, I'm not going to tell you too much more. But yeah, so that's that's page two. Page three, we cut to uh, the 1970s, early 1970s, probably mid 70s. And so this is Geraldo Rivera and he's live, he's televising the comeback concert of the decade, and it's uh, Doug, or the D's comeback. And so uh, I like this. After, oh, Doug's big comeback, after tonight, oh, slow down, Art. After tonight's performance, the 70s will never be the same. There are over a million D heads here tonight, and nearly all of them are women, or they will be once they're old enough to vote. So uh, this is these are the jokes, you guys. <laughs> I think I think it's absolutely hilarious. I, I love the the tongue in cheek um, fun of uh, of Chrono. It's just going to be a fun universe. Um, yeah, some of this is still going to be tweaked. So this last the last two balloons of uh, of uh, Geraldo Rivera down here are going to be moved over to the left. They kind of stack weird the way they are. So there's still there's still some tweaks to these pages that need to be made, but I just wanted to show them to you. Some of the cover um, text isn't on there, like the Seventeen magazine. There's going to be some more text in the Rolling Stone cover. So, um, but you guys can see this is this is happening, man. The lettering is all here. This is the the D on the Tonight Show. Uh, Johnny Carson asks uh, Doug. That's a wild and wacky song. What's it about? Uh, what's me about? The Me is the name of the song. And then he says, uh, Johnny, it's about me. And then Johnny says, of course it is. Now let's talk about Cher. And then Doug says, Cher's not me. And then uh, um, we have his sidekick saying, hey, yo. So, yeah, this is just going to be fun stuff. Fun stuff. So, yeah, here's. Here's these are double page spreads too. So this is uh, the left side of Doug rocking. So this is kind of a montage of images that take you through the concert. And so he's ending the show, and now he's going to finish his interview with uh, Geraldo Rivera. And then something ends up happening, and uh, the room turns green, and then you see that Doug is now in a different place. So he got pulled from his timeline into the chrono mechanics timeline, which is a prehistoric landscape, which is a prehistoric timeline. So he's kind of an Alice in Wonderland 
kind of character out of, uh, you know, out of their, uh, their location, out of their world and brought into a new world. So that's what's happening with Doug here. So he's being introduced to all the different characters, all the different uh, mechanics. Carvaggio, Oot, and now Zinn. He's a squid. So this is the end. This is page 10. So that's the preview, guys. This is uh, this is a lot of fun. It's all coming together. We are um, pretty much done with this thing. Just we have a, a few more pages to be lettered and then um, some editing to be done. And then it's off to the printer. So everybody that's back, Chrono, just know that these books are going to be printed soon. And we are going to go into fulfillment directly after that. So, yeah, Chrono is moving forward, you guys. And this all exists because of you guys. It's all because of you, um, you backing, your support, your sharing on social media, sharing, you know, this platform, my YouTube channel, you know, giving thumbs up, all that stuff, man. That's the only reason this stuff is happening right now. So yeah, uh, this was just a little, little thank you, just a thank you preview of Chrono Mechanics, uh, the lettered pages. We got to 40K today. Um, that's a big, big uh, move. That means that uh, the golden ticket is now going to come your way. One out of every 10 backers is going to get a golden ticket. Uh, fill it out, send it to me, and you get a drawing absolutely free. So very, very cool. Um, Mark says, uh, looking good. Well, thank you so much, brother. Uh, thanks to everybody for hanging out. Uh, it was a blast. And, uh, and back chrono so you can get this Gigantor drawing. And I'll see you tomorrow. Take care, guys.